Welcome back everybody. Today we're out here doing a little bit of a range review of the Ruger Precision. This one here is in 308. Throughout the intro you saw a little 6.5 going down range as well. But we're going to focus on this one because the feature set really is sort of the same. And I know this one's going to be popular as well due to the common chambering of 308. So uh, for 6.5 really what we're looking at, just for you guys considering it, is a little bit better accuracy on the whole. Uh, just due to the ballistic coefficient of the bullet, a little bit flatter flight trajectory and a little bit more uh, long range capabilities. But with the 308, you get cheaper ammo. And uh, of course, you can reload as well. Lots of folks have uh, the reloading dies for 308. They're very, very common and uh, lots of different bullet options available. Of course, that applies to speed more as well. Anyway, enough of my rambling. So we'll go over some of the features of the gun here and then uh, get into the accuracy portion, see what kind of groups we can get with it, and then come back at the end and let you know what we think of it. So why are these guns so popular, right? A lot of features going on for this gun, and, and that includes the fact that it costs MSRP right around $1,400 on the street. You're going to be able to find it for less. So that's certainly good uh, with everything you get. You get an adjustable stock, uh, the uh, optics mount there, a cold hammer forged barrel, and uh, key mod grip up front there for attaching any sort of accessories that you want to but before diving into all those details we'll see what kind of accuracy we can get out of it all right so here's the setup we have we have a vortex viper 6x24 uh, scope on there sit in american defense mount uh, we have it in the ctk precision rest here throughout the video you've seen it uh, be a shot at the bipod it's an atlas bipod but of course the rest is going to be a little better for absolute precision uh, down there on the end of the barrel we have a suppressor it's the uh, Suppressed Armament Systems, Reaper MX. Now, uh, that does have a taper mount. So what I found in the past, because I know some folks will say it in the comment section if I don't say it, is that uh, suppressors with taper mounts like this one tend to give you a slight increase in uh, accuracy. So uh, I know people tend to think you get a little less, but not what I've seen. Uh, with the taper mounts tend to give you a little bit more accuracy. So we've got a few different loads here. We have the uh, Federal Premium uh, Sierra Match King 175 grain load. That's what we're going to fire first. After that, we have the Gorilla Ammunition. Same bullet, but a different loading. So again, 175 grainer. And then we have some Freedom Munitions, 150 grain FMJ, just sort of practice stuff. And we'll see what kind of action we can get out of that, because I know a lot of folks don't want to send match grade downrange uh, to practice with. They don't have to, so we'll see how it does. Uh, downrange target at 100 yards. Today's wind is not too bad, at least right now. Uh, we're looking at about 5 mile an hour from my back, so no crosswind, so it should be all right there. I think that's about it. Let's talk in. More shooting. Up first will be the uh, Federal Load. Those circles down there, just so you know, are uh, two inch circles on that target to give you an estimation of what you're seeing before we actually go down there and measure it. Not too shabby, at least not from what I see on the, uh, through the scope. Up next, we'll have the Gorilla, gorilla Munitions uh, video. A couple things to point out here while we're shooting, I suppose I can cover them in this part of it, is that it does accept tons of different magazines, which is awesome. It comes with P mags, but um, really, SR25, 110, uh, some other precision mags, they all work in there. It's a really ingenious system. It has this little mag release here on the back, and uh, the fact that it works with just about any major magazine out there on the market is awesome because I know a lot of folks out there already have them. So that's certainly a good thing. And one thing I noticed while I was shooting is the trigger weight on it. So uh, it's an adjustable trigger that we have here with that little uh, sort of dingus as Tim at the Military Arms Channel calls it. And uh, right now it's set in the factory configuration, breaking right at four pounds, but it is user adjustable. So you can adjust it to anywhere between, I believe, 2.2 pounds and 4.5 pounds. So uh, Again, it's as it came from the factory right now, so right around four pounds, so just something to point out. And 
while I'm letting that barrel cool down a little bit in the next load, point out another thing as we're looking at it, just going through the features. On top, we have a uh, built-in 1913 style rail for adding any sort of uh, optics that you want to. It is a 20 MOA rail, so on the 308 version that we have here, um, maybe not that big of a deal due to the ballistics of the round, but on the 6.5 uh, Creedmoor version, it's definitely going to be nice, uh, so that way you have a little bit more room when shooting out at distance with a nice flat shooting round, and uh, it's going to save you some elevation that some of your scopes may not have and give you a little, just a little more flexibility shooting at distance, I suppose. Uh, it's certainly not bad if you don't need it. It uh, doesn't hurt anything. The bolt here is a 70-degree bolt throw. So it's not, you know, terrible like a Mosin, but it's it's a little bit more than some other sort of high-end builds out there. Not bad if you're not like a huge bolt gun aficionado. You probably won't notice it. It feels pretty natural, so no big deal there, but it is 70 degrees. Anyway, enough yapping. Last group with the uh, Freedom Munitions uh, 115 grain full metal jacket load. check it out. So let's check these groups out and see what they actually measured out at. First group right here was with the uh, Federal gold medal match. We we're coming in right there. Well, which one's bigger? About one and three eighths inch. So if you measure this one, it's one and a quarter. If you measure it high, it's one and three eighths. So I suppose one and three eighths is the group size itself. Right here with the uh, Gorilla. Center to center, we're right at one inch on the dot. Uh, let's make sure yeah, it's smaller. Yep, one inch on the dot with the Gorilla munitions load, ammunitions load, excuse me. And with the Freedom, you can see, certainly it was the uh, best group by a hair, looking at about seven eighths of an inch. Now, uh, keep in mind, these are all factory loads. If you guys are reloaders and really care, want to tighten up those shot groups, you can certainly work up a load that'll probably give you a little bit more accuracy out there. But without question, uh, just from this little test we did here, it's an MOA gun um, for sure. So probably not going to win accuracy contests. We're talking about really high level shooters, but for most shooters, you're going to be able to do just fine with it and probably taking a little bit of poundage off that uh, trigger would help as well. But it is what it is. We shoot it and we uh, display the results that we get here. That's, that's how it works on this channel. We mentioned in the beginning that there is the 6.5 Creedmoor, which is this little sucker right here in the back, the black one. Uh, one of the differences between that and the 308 is going to be barrel length. This one has a 24 inch barrel on the Creedmoor and I believe 20 inch here on the 308. So um, just due to the ballistics of the round trying to get the most out of it, that's why it's a little bit longer there. It's also going to add a little bit of weight. So in terms of weight, these rifles come in right at 11 pounds uh, from the factory with no scope and the magazine empty. So weight wise for a precision gun, that's pretty good. You don't want it too light because then you lose a little bit of stability, but you don't want it too heavy because then you can't carry it around if you want to use it for hunting or whatever the case may be. So I, I like that weight. That's a good weight. One thing a lot of people like about this rifle is the stock. It's very easy to set the ergonomics up to you. You can adjust your length of pull and then clamp it down. You can also uh, change the amount of tension that you want on there for clamping to keep it a little bit more secure. Same goes here for this cheek riser. Now we're using a uh, standard uh, AR height mount here because our objective lens down here on the scope is not so large but for those of you guys that want a larger uh, scope to get a little bit more light in uh, you're going to need to use a higher mount and that adjustable cheek piece will let you guys get a good cheek weld with it so that's certainly a good thing now one downside of this stock is that I've had uh, this stock pop open two or three times on me while shooting so like I mentioned earlier you can adjust how tight you want it to be when you clamp it down there's a little knob on the side where you can turn it uh, to get the tension just right but Regardless of how we've done it, it's popped open a few times on me now, so I'm certainly not a fan of that. Could it be user error? Sure, it could be. I mean, I shoot a lot of guns. I've, I've never seen that before, so that's not a good thing in my opinion. Um, one thing that is a good thing is that it does have this 1913 uh, rail section here on the bottom that's going to allow you to mount the monopod on there for those of you guys that want really good accuracy when shooting off the bipod or in different uh, barrier positions and things like that. It's certainly advantageous. Um, moving up. Our bolt here, the actual knob, from the factory I like it. Like we mentioned earlier, it's a 70 degree bolt and the knob is good. It's big. It lets you really grab onto it. Even if your hands are sweaty like they are out here today, it's very, very hot today and humid and they're sweating, but I had no problem running the bolt just fine. But you can take the knob off and put 
any number of aftermarket ones on there, which certainly is nice. And one thing I didn't mention on the stock is that if you take a look at it there, you'll see the castle nut. Any of your AR stocks will fit on there. So if you wanted to throw like a Magpul PRS stock on there, which probably would be my choice, um, you can go ahead and do so just like you would on a regular AR, very modular, just uh, remove that castle nut and throw the new one on. The stock does fold to the side, as you see here. There's no actual clamping mechanism in there, so it's just tension. Uh, certainly not like something that I'd want to count on for it to stay closed, but for transportation and stuff like that, it's awesome. Uh, so certainly a good thing there. Um, moving back to the bolt, one thing I want to point out is the shroud back here on the bolt is polymer. It's one of the most frequently criticized portions of this rifle or thing about this rifle. Now, uh, saying that, there are aftermarket versions available for it. But from a practical standpoint, I really don't see how you would have any sort of damage from it. If you're just using the rifle normally, it's probably going to be just fine. But just something I wanted to point out there, talking about the bolt. Just like the stock where you can use standard AR parts for it, the grip's the same way. It looks very familiar to an AR-15 grip. It's because it is an AR-15 grip. So if you guys want to swap out any, of your, any number of your uh, favorite grips, BCM, Magpul, uh, whatever the case may be, It'll drop right in there, no issues. The wind's picking up and I think the storms are blowing in, so we're gonna to try to hurry up with the rest of the review. Uh, moving on to the handguard, it is a AR standard handguard. It's got the key mod accessories at the three, six and nine o'clock position. It does come with this 1913 uh, Picatinny rail section that you can use if you don't have anything that's direct key mod uh, mountable, but it has a full length 1913 rail on top. So if you wanna mount any sort of like laser, lasers, laser range finders. I know those are becoming popular for long range shooters to know where you're at. Um, it'll mount right on there just fine. It does come with that PIX rail section for mounting uh, any of your direct attach systems to a Picatinny rail. Of course, the beauty of key mod is you can actually mount directly to that, skip that altogether if you guys have those components. Ruger is one of the few companies in America that has their own cold hammer forged barrel machine. So they make these barrels in-house, cold hammer forged. Uh, however, they're not chrome lined or melanated. So in terms of durability, maybe not getting maximum barrel life out of it, but most folks aren't gonna be able to afford to shoot enough ammo out of it anyway to ever see that. But for those of you that are, it's just something to keep in mind. Now, if you do happen to shoot your barrel out, they're very easy to replace. So uh, when these guns first came out, there weren't a lot of aftermarket accessories. Of course, that's changed due to their popularity and barrels are available now. So you can swap them out, different calibers, different lengths, different profiles, whatever suits your needs. So that's certainly a good thing. Down there on the end, we have the standard AR-10 thread pattern. Uh, so any of your suppressors, muzzle accessories, etc., will fit on there just fine. It comes with a thread protector on it, like what you see here on the 6.5, but I think a lot of folks are going to want to put something on there, um, whether it be a suppressor if you can in your state or a flash hider just to minimize the uh, concussion going down range, if you, especially if you're a hunter. With that, I think we're going to finish up the review right there. This rifle certainly has a lot going for it. Uh, it's accurate, like you saw, has a nice trigger, user adjustable, like we mentioned. Very, very modular, which I think is one of the nicest things about it. And you combine that with the price point that you're getting for a rifle with this amount of features, and really, uh, at least to my knowledge, there hasn't been anything like it out there in the market before. Um, if you wanted to build something like this in the past, you have to buy like a chassis system, uh, drop your action in, fit it, drop your barrel in, all that stuff. Uh, but with the Ruger Precision, it all comes from the factory. Like I said, there's certainly things I don't particularly like about it personally, um, the stock being the primary, but I know some folks love it. So I suppose sort of user preference at that point, but you get a lot of rifle for the money. Um, I've been very happy with this one, no real issues with it. One thing I should point out that I forgot about earlier was the bolt initially was a little bit sticky to put down uh, when you're really running it hard every now and then it would get hung up but that went away after about 100 rounds just generally breaking it in so far we haven't had any issues since then with it but just something to note if you get your rifle out of the box you may just want to just dry run it a few times or at least run some rounds through it and see if it smooths itself out because it did on this one uh, with the 6.5 that never happened so it was smooth right out of the box the whole way so I guess it's just variances in manufacturing or something like that. But if you guys have any questions about the rifle, by all means, post below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page, as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you in the next video.